A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, When Israel was a child, I loved him. Out of Egypt I called my son. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk, who took them in my arms. I drew them with human cords, with bands of love. I fostered them like one who raises an infant to his cheeks. Yet, though I stooped to feed my child, they did not know that I was their healer. My heart is overwhelmed. My pity is stirred. I will not give vent to my blazing anger. I will not destroy Ephraim again, for I am God and not a man, the Holy One present among you. I will not let the flames consume you. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, to me, the very least of all the holy ones, this grace was given, to preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ, and to bring to light for all what is the plan of the mystery hidden from ages past in God, who created all things, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the principalities and authorities in the heavens. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. 
For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he may grant you in accord with the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in the inner self, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the holy ones what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The word of the Lord. expiation for our sins. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus Vobiscum, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Johannem. Gloria Since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth so that you also may come to believe. For this happens so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. Verbum Domini. Today we celebrate the great solemnity, the sacred heart of Jesus, that the church and her liturgy and the feasts we celebrate bring to mind, remind us of the great love that Jesus has for us. And the second reading today from Ephesians, that this very wisdom of God, the plan of God, uh, the plan of our salvation, his love for us is made known now Paul says, through the church, that we, that this breadth and length, death, height, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge, so that you might be filled uh, with all the fullness of God. <clears throat> so to know his love, to be filled with his fullness, to, to know his wisdom, his love for us. That's what the church calls us to meditate upon on in, in thinking and praying, meditating upon his sacred heart. It is a meditation on God's love, that devotion to the Sacred Heart, which has a great tradition in the church from the earliest days of the church, really, is 
totally oriented to the love of God. It is the symbol of God's love for us. That the cross, you know, the sacred heart is, is shown as wounded, crowned with thorns, pierced heart, an image of his suffering on the cross is the deepest revelation of God's love. That seeing his pierced heart as suffering, we see his love for us more clearly. As he would often tell the mystics, what more could I have done than to suffer and die for us? The popes have written that the sacred heart is a summary of our faith, that the word became flesh to save us through the cross and resurrection, through his suffering, death, and resurrection, we are saved. The heart is, it's a human heart, but he took human flesh and suffered and died for us. Instrument, that humanity, that sacred humanity became an instrument of our salvation. The second uh, Vatican Council had a beautiful document and meditation on the incarnation in God he the church in the modern world. It says that for by his incarnation, he, the son of God, has in a certain way united himself with every man. <clears throat> he worked with human hands. He thought with a human mind. He acted with a human will and loved with a human heart. Born of the Virgin Mary, he has truly been made one of us in all things except sin. That is so key, you know, the revelation of God in Jesus Christ that he loves us with a human heart. You know, we think about in our own journeys that when we are loved by others, hopefully in our families growing up, we can come to believe in God's love for us when we experience a human love. Because that human love participates in God himself, in God's love. And it leads us along. It helps us to, to believe and experience God's love through the love of others. So the fact that the word took on a human flesh, loved us with that human heart, that's natural for us. That's how we come to know and experience God's love, through human love. Jesus, who is fully God and fully man, loves us with a divine salvific love that transforms us, that raises us up. But it's also a love that knows suffering, that we can connect with, that we know in our own lives that through the cross our love is purified, that our love becomes real when we have to make some sacrifices when we have to endure some stuff, either out of love for God or for other people, that love grows, it becomes real. It, it's purified of a self-serving love, a tax collector love that loves because we get something in return. Our love becomes divine when it's, it's giving, like Jesus' love. Hans Urs von Balthasar, the great theologian, said that the real essence of Christ's passion consisted in the two things we least like to bear and suffer, fear and disgrace. We see in his agony in the garden, Jesus prays, Father, if you're willing, remove this chalice from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And then the angel appears to him to strengthen him in his suffering. And then we're told in the scripture that in his agony, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. That the angel didn't take away that suffering, but God strengthened him through the appearance of that angel. That he, in his human nature, recoiled, in his humanity recoiled at the coming suffering of the crucifixion, where he drinks from the chalice, an Old Testament image of bitter suffering. There's the physical suffering, but also bearing the weight of our sins, experiencing the alienation of sin from all time, of, of all of humanity's sin, that he never committed sin, was never tainted by sin, but he took upon himself we could say the guilt or the punishment of that sin, the experience of alienation, of separation 
from God, from the Father. Oh, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? He, you know, sadly, maybe you've experienced this in falling into sin. You feel distant. You feel separate from God. Well, he experienced that horrible alienation for all of us, which is incomprehensible. You, know, you think about the sins of, of humanity, it's, it's incomprehensible what he endured. And in his humanity, he experienced the fear of that. Fear in itself is a human emotion. You know, we all have it, and he entered into that. And von Balthasar reminds us, you know, that we dread that fear and disgrace, and Jesus endured it out of love for us. And that his side on the cross is opened up for us, his heart is pierced, that we can see that love, that endurance that he, that he underwent for us. That blood and water flowed out from his side. Again, Vatican II said that this symbolizes the origin and growth of the church. It is an image of the sacraments, the water coming out of his side, baptism, the blood, the Eucharist that's given to us. These sacraments, the church fathers teach us, make the church. It forms us, draws us into communion with him, into his mystical body. St. Ambrose said that as Eve was taken from the side of sleeping Adam, so the church was born from the pierced heart of Christ hanging dead upon the cross. In the sleep of death, you know, the church, uh, Jesus' bride is taken from his side. So we, members of the church, are born out of his self-gift on the cross, out of his suffering. That, that redemption offered to us, that grace, that transformation to us, that comes to us in the church. We receive, as Paul says in Ephesians, the fullness of revelation, of wisdom of God in the church. We receive the fullness of truth and grace, which is necessary for our salvation. It's offered to us in Jesus, that his love transforms us, unites us with himself. We experience that in the church, that we're called, like Thomas, to come and touch his side, to see his wounds, to experience, feel, and come to believe in his love for us. You know, because we know suffering, we know fear, we know, you know, disgrace and to some degree, and we see that Jesus endured these things that we dread, that he is, hasn't abandoned us. He enters into that suffering, is present to us in that suffering, that he's going to strengthen us, <clears throat> be with us, walk with us through that stuff. That's, that's, that's love. You know, to have a friend or someone in your life that'll uh, come alongside you in the difficulties of life, that's love. And Jesus does that in a supreme way to strengthen us, to be with us, and to encourage us. And we have to come to him in the heart of the church, receive the sacraments, come in prayer, and today to med meditate upon his sacrificial love, his suffering for us, that he truly, truly does love us, and we have nothing to fear, trusting in him. May we have devotion to his sacred heart, and be strengthened and encouraged by his love for us. Let us stand and profess our faith.